Hey guys, Ryan with the Driven Channel. I've got three cars that have recently broken down. We've got five cars in our fleet. One of them belongs to my son. It's actually mine, but you know, I let him drive it. Uh, Camry, totally reliable, no problems at all. We've got a Fiat electric car. Those two things just scream unreliable. It's been totally reliable. No problems at all, haven't had any issues with it. However, my Volkswagen recently had to get out of the shop because the exhaust pipe was cracked. AWE makes excellent stuff, but I neglected to put a uh, mount insert, and you Volkswagen guys will know exactly what I'm talking about, uh, on this car whenever I did all of the swap over stuff. So basically that allows the engine to rock back and forth and it cracked my exhaust. Uh, which sucks, but I got it fixed, no big deal. Um, I'm, I've got the mount insert coming in. I'm gonna like take it easy on the car until I get that fixed. But the other problem is now we've got this weird intermittent problem with the Z. And we're gonna be working on that today to see if we can get that figured out because uh, I took it to the dealer and they told me it was a battery that was bad. Um, battery is about two weeks old. It is an Optima Red Top battery because the reason why we got that was because this car sits more than it gets driven. So basically I didn't want to have a battery problem. So uh, battery, they told me it dropped down to in the 11s under a load, which I know for a fact is a good battery. Also they tested it at somewhere around 700 cold cranking amps, uh, which given it's an 800 plus cold cranking amp battery, yeah, it's a little bit low on charge. However, my only issue with that is I believe that the battery that I took out of this vehicle only had 600 something cranking amps from the factory. So I know that it's not a bad battery. The problem is, and this happened a couple of times while my wife was driving, of course, I haven't gotten it tacked up, but I believe her. Uh, the problem is that it starts and then immediately dies. Um, and whenever I started it a couple of times, it sort of started and stumbled. It didn't completely die. Uh, but I have a feeling that this thing's got about 40,000 miles on it. It's never had the throttle plates cleaned and uh, never had the mass airflow sensor cleaned. Now, mass airflow sensor or whatever, uh, I'm just going to clean that while we're in there. But I'm going to make a quick video and show you how easy that is to do on a 370Z because honestly, I just looked at this thing. It doesn't look like it's going to be that hard. Uh, of course, whenever I get started here in just a second, that may totally change. But I'm going to get started here in just a second and uh, we're going to film the whole thing so that you guys can see how to clean the throttle plates and clean the mass airflow sensor on a pretty much any 370Z because it's been the same car since 2009. This is a 2014. Anyway, uh, let's do it. All right, so I'm back. I'm under, under the hood of the Z and I think the hardest part so far has been figuring out how to mount the GoPro, which um, I ended up using a suction cup mount under the hood. I thought that was kind of cool. So. I found a Phillips head screwdriver somewhere in that pile of mess. If you watched the last video where I worked on something, you know that I call this place Sketch Garage. Uh, so, Phillips head screwdriver. Basically, there's two screws that hold the mass airflow sensors on. <clears throat> I kind of pre-broke them loose, but uh, literally, this is, this is pretty simple. This is about as simple as it gets. Pull these two screws out. I'm going to do this live time for you, so... Okay, mass airflow sensor is located just aft of the, uh, the air box. This car is totally stock, so no modifications on this thing. Uh, anyway, once you get those two screws loose, like I do, I always have at least one screw loose, put them in my hands here, keep them set aside. I'm going to pull this mass airflow sensor out. It looks like I may have to unplug it first. There's a little tab on the side, push that in. Of course, it's much easier to unplug whenever the screws are in it. <laughs> so I'm going to put one screw back in to hold it in while I pop this thing out. <clears throat> All right, it's loose. Take this screw back out. Okay, now mass airflow sensor is out. Now you can see in this, there's a tiny wire. I don't know if you can see it very well, but uh, I'll see if I can put a picture in here from the uh, interweb so that you can see. Basically the wire in here is what measures the uh, 
air that goes into the engine and uh, uses that information to give to the computer basically to allow it to know how much air and fuel to mix together. So uh, when these things get dirty, then it can cause all kinds of funky stuff to happen. I don't know that that's what's wrong with this car, but hey, I'm going to try it. Can't hurt to clean it anyway. It's good maintenance. So I have bought some CRC mass airflow sensor cleaner, which is sitting right over here. And I can like this. You can buy other brands too. I just got this because it's the first thing that I saw. And the brand, I think I remember being good. I don't really know for a fact. But uh, on the back, and I will take some pictures of this so that you can see that uh, up front right now as far as the directions on how to do this because I don't want to mess this up. So uh, while as, I'm as I'm holding this, I'm going to zoom in and you're going to see a, uh, a bigger picture of it. All right, so as per the instructions, you spray this down inside the wire. I've already done that, or otherwise I would uh, be showing you on camera. Plus, I want to get this stuff all over the neat little engine. But you spray directly onto the wires of the mass airflow sensor using the little uh, straw provided. Uh, it says on here up to 15 times. So that's what uh, that's what I just did. Uh, I'm about to uh, go ahead and take the uh, air duct hose off here and clean the intake as well so I'll get a little bit better angle for that. <clears throat> I went ahead and did the other side while I had it out. It's exactly the same just mirror image so I don't need to show you both sides because that would be uh, just a waste of your time. Anyway uh, we're gonna get a couple of things taken apart here yeah, on uh, on camera and uh, and I'll show you basically how to get the uh, air tubes off so that we can get the uh, the rest of the stuff cleaned up in the back. Okay, I didn't really find a particularly good way of getting a better camera angle for you. Sorry about that. But basically, there's two hose clamps. This is very simple. <clears throat> Loosen the hose clamps. I'll speed this up so that you don't have to see it all. But hose clamp here, hose clamp here. And there's a little spring clamp that holds uh, what looks like a little PCB feed tube in the middle, at least on this side. It looks like... Yeah, exactly on the other side, too. These things are literally, literally a mirror image. So... I'm going to show you this side. Uh, so again, these two clamps and another clamp in the middle. The clamp in the middle I'm just going to use a pair of pliers on, but we'll speed this footage up so that you won't have to sit there and watch me turn screws. Although I'm sure someone would probably like to tell me to turn some screws. Anyway. All right, while this is in fast forward, I'm going to talk about one of the things I forgot to mention. You need to disconnect the negative battery terminal before you start this job and after you're done. That'll take a 10 millimeter. Good luck finding it. Okay, I've got everything loose. I'm going to try now and take this air hose off first from the front because I've usually found that once you can get it off in the front, it's much easier to get it off on the other side. And of course, when you're working in a tight engine bay like this, it's not always easy. But got that off. I'm going to pull this hose off. That's what she said. And I've got it loose. I gotta get back in here and get this thing pulled off. Like I thought, this little hose on the side might be the one that's more of a pain in the butt. Ugh. And it's connected to the PCV system, so got to be careful with it. All right, I fished the hose out of the hole. Always remember that. At some point, you always got to fish the hose out of the hole. All right, so the throttle on this is electronically actuated. So I'm going to have to cut here for just a second and uh, figure out a way of opening the throttle while having the camera rolling at it. So that should be interesting, being that I'm filming by myself. But uh, let's figure that out. All right, I am hoping and praying that you can see what's going on here, guys. I'm going to open this throttle flap, which to do on this car, you push at the bottom. And you feel it kind of have a resistance because you're kind of working against the electronic motor. And you can see in there, there's quite a bit of carbon buildup, just like I thought there would be. So 
we're gonna get in there and get that cleaned up and uh, get this put back together okay so I've got a uh, nice little uh, detail rag here because it's all I have in my garage uh, and we've got the throttle body cleaner and basically the idea of this is you spray it in you get it all nice and soaked and you go in there and in this case you can only get one finger in so you hold it open with the other side and you get your finger in there with a the rag on it and you scrub it up. I've already done that and just to show you how filthy this was this is what I took off of this. Now this is a relatively low mileage car it's only got right at 40,000 miles. Now really you know whatever, whenever I would sell these things sell these services to people I would tell them to do it every 15,000 miles now that I'm in here and I'm doing it to myself on my own car I really should have done this a lot sooner. So. Uh, I'm going to do this on the other side as well, off camera, because it's exactly the same. Uh, but basically, you go back together exactly the same as you came apart, putting the hose back in the same way if you can't figure out how to put it back in after you've taken it out. That's what she said. Anyway, we're going to wrap this video up right now, and uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, edition of Sketch Garage. Not quite as sketchy as the last one, but uh, I enjoyed doing it, and hopefully it fixes the car. Uh, we'll end with a shot of this thing uh, hopefully firing up and running. and uh, Or maybe a giant failure and it didn't work at all. But uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you guys on the next video.